My name's Scott Moran. I'm uh, known as the Mushroom Guy in Kelowna. So I'm here with Scott Moran. I've known Scott for about seven years now. And Scott and I uh, are both in the mushroom industry and I thought it'd be really cool to make a video today about foraging. Today we're going to look for pine mushrooms. So Scott, what does this spot mean to you and why are we looking for pine mushrooms here today? Um, well, this is just a really good pine mushroom patch. Kind of one of those like secret spots that all us mushroom pickers are supposed to have. Um, but this one really is like my number one best secret spot. Um, we're going into the woods, across the log, up hills, over the river, near the waterfall. I mean, it's really uh, took a lot of time and effort just to find it and make it happen. And then pine mushrooms, out of all the wild mushrooms in BC, that would be the number one cash crop. So that's a big, big business. There's probably thousands of mushroom pickers right now going after pine mushrooms all the way from Terrace down to the border in the Kootenays. Um, but for me, I think there's no place I'd rather be right now to pick pine mushrooms this is going to be a really good day. So what else uh, do you think we might see today other than pine mushrooms in this spot? Um, well it's late October so pretty much everything else is out so there will be chanterelles, bullets, a lot of other not so well known mushrooms, gypsy mushrooms, possibly a few yellowfoot chanterelles um, and then there's probably a few that have come up since the last time I was here that I won't even really expect, you know, every year has different crops, so there should be a few coming up that'll be a bit of a surprise, and we'll get mostly pines, but there should be at least four or five other ones that, you know, you could fill up your basket with, and they're very, very nice mushrooms to eat, so it's not just pines for sure. Cool, well, let's get to it. Yeah, we're gonna do it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> guy you just see the bit of white on the edge hopefully it's a pine could be anything but no not a pine <laughs> nice that's a nice one yeah Beautiful. So Scott, maybe you want to tell us uh, what we're looking for. Well, these lovely pine mushrooms, that's as good as it gets. Um, but we're here at the top of this slope. So you can just kind of follow it this way and this way. Right where the slope meets the flat. Pine mushrooms really like this sandy soil, so if you don't get that soil, it doesn't matter how hard you look, um, you're just not going to find them. So on a slope or on a ridge near a river, near a lake, it um, doesn't always grow like that, but that's pretty classic pine mushroom territory. So here you have just like a thin layer of topsoil, and you can see actually look down in this hole where they came out of, you can see how dry and dusty that is in there and just like really gritty sandy dirt. Um, so that's that's the most important thing for getting pine mushrooms. So once you get to the top of this hill and you go into the flat part, you'll find nothing. And then there's another slope way back there that's just like this one. And it's just the two slopes. And other than that, every direction around us, there's no mushrooms. I've looked everywhere. That's how I found this one and narrowed it down. And now it's a lot easier knowing exactly where they are. You might... Uh, Always good to look around. You just poke around any lumps you might see, see if there's anything hiding. Um. And then I got another one just right there I can show you.
on these crazy slopes, I like to just drop my basket and go for quick runs down the hill and come back with as much as I can. Uh, I know there's one here so far. So it's pretty easy to see from this side of the log. You just have to make sure you don't break the stem. There we go. And that is a really nice pine mushroom. That could be like one of the nicest ones we find today. Lola, come here. I have to watch where I step because I might actually step on one that I can't see yet. So they're way easier to see actually when you're looking uphill because you see the whites. The first one is right next to you here. Yep. So far I see three, but there could be more. And then you have to squeeze them and make sure they don't crack. Um, so that means there's worms going through there, so the tunnels that the worms make will make a crunchy sound. And then, get that. And that one. This. And now I see the first one that's really hiding. Yeah, nice. Okay. Yeah. So out here where there's a bit more sunlight, they seem to be happening more than in the shady spots. I got a question for you. Yeah. Do you feel obligated to patch patch up the holes? Do you think it even matters? Do you fill in the hole when you pick? No. I don't know. Sometimes I get them confused with squirrel holes. They look pretty similar but uh, come back next year and it's all just going to be covered in needles. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter? No, no, I think it's totally fine. It's one of those myths. Maybe I'm biased. Yeah. Some people, they'll take the little piece of sand and put it back in the hole, but if you come and look at this hole here, it's covered in spores and mycelium. And yep. So it's like, it's still a very active spot. So all these mushrooms here would be one patch. They'd all be connected underground with their mycelium. So if you really dig, you might be able to find a channel of it going through the earth. And this is the little bit of the white fuzzy stuff. But should be some of that going right from those mushrooms over to this one. any buttons here so I gotta backtrack and make sure we didn't miss anything over here oh yeah there's another patch here oh yeah so I'm gonna just start a pile this 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 no Come on! Hey. One here. Yeah, this is a nice patch. I see a bunch more over there.
on. These ones get caught on roots and rocks, do spirals, and you really don't want to break the stem. Where the mushrooms are. <laughs> there and what? There and there. Oh man, that's awesome. This one's great. There's another patch of number ones. And if you're wondering about what kind of forest you're looking for, like I don't have a perfectly clear answer for that. They do grow in a few different kinds. Um, but the best option would be like a nice mixed growth with a lot of old trees. Um, so here, like we have the giant Douglas fir. Those are the biggest ones here. We do have some cedar, but you don't want a forest that's straight cedar. You don't want a forest that's straight pine. There is a type of pine mushroom that seems to like that same sandy soil. Um, or a pine tree rather So sometimes you will see you know the nice young bushy pine trees growing in the same spots where the pine mushrooms are But in this case there are zero pine trees, so it doesn't really make sense with the name you think they exclusively grow under pine um, And now in the West Kootenai Monashi region where we are um, They can come out as this year. They actually came out in mid-September But normally the very end of September first week of October is when you're gonna start finding your first buttons and then by mid-October you'll have a lot of large fully developed uh, pine mushrooms. Um, I know on the coast it can be a little bit later so say like Vancouver, Vancouver Island, Sunshine Coast, um, Squamish, Pemberton, Whistler, all those areas I would say is even as late as uh, November right into mid-November and then Powell River is the last region of BC and they'll finish right into December maybe the first week of December might be good for them. Um, but this year was the first time I'd ever had a decent amount starting in the middle of September. There was the odd one popping like at the end of August. I heard even mid-July there was some kind of strange flush. But those mushrooms, they just came out and they go soft and wormy because they're just not growing in the right climate. But pine mushrooms also like a lot of rain. It takes a really good downpour to get into that underneath layer below the topsoil. Um, and they're really protected so even if you get rain for a week straight you'll still get nice dry mushrooms because they're so far in the ground. I'm pulling out these buttons right here and this one you can just barely see it's super protected there's a few here like that just have to wiggle it out and then that's what was hiding so yeah this is the uh, new edge of the patch I just discovered this this year so I used to walk way over there. I think these hills on the tops of them, you could just walk along there and we've already filled up our basket here today and that would have been another spot to go get five or six baskets. Uh, the price of pine mushrooms wholesale was really high this year so if this patch hadn't have been logged I would have been able to make a lot of money off of it. Um, I was picking here since 2011 and doing well just about every year and now the patch is pretty much cut in half. Um, so that was a heartbreaking discovery this year and it's crazy if you actually calculate the value of the wood that you get each year versus the value of the mushrooms in the forest there's not really any comparison just unfortunately there isn't anybody to pick all the mushrooms so 
I think if more people got into it and started seeing the value of our renewable foods in the forest instead of just this as the only commodity, it would uh, really help to protect the forest and get everybody on board. My name is Scott Moran. I'm uh, known as the Mushroom Guy in Kelowna. You can find me at the Kelowna Farmer's Market every Saturday from April to October. Selling wild plants, mushrooms, pretty much all that nice wild edibles. And then uh, I also supply all our local chefs in the Okanagan Valley. So they are from Soyuz to Vernon. I'm, uh, you see wild mushrooms on the plate. There's a good chance that we got them from a place just like this. Today we're picking pines. So here's our loot. We're just on our way out. So there's the pine mushroom or matsutake. Uh, this is the favorite mushroom of Asian people, you know, Japanese, Korean, Chinese. You can find these going for like 80 to $100 a pound in the markets and major cities in Japan. Um, so it's a big, big business exporting them out of the country, but all mine are going to get sold locally in the Okanagan and sometimes Vancouver. Um, so some of these same mushrooms that you see here I'm going to have for sale at the farmer's market this Saturday. So it's nice even though we're just almost at the end of fall, winter's around the corner and this is the best time for producing wild mushrooms and all types of wild edibles. So we have one more outdoor market left and I'm still, you know, in peak produ production. So mushroom season is uh, pretty different than most fruits and vegetables. So my dad, uncle, brother, cousins, we all used to come out to places like this and just spend the entire weekend, entire weeks, just out there having fun. Uh, mostly just did it just for ourselves, but eventually I made it a career and I ended up entering the job market right at the uh, start of the last recession. And so I decided I would just go mushroom picking for a day and see if I could make some money and if there was a possibility I could make it work instead of going out and trying to find a crappy job at a supermarket or something. Um, so I gave that a shot and it really worked. You know, I sold to the local chefs. They were really receptive, even though they didn't know me and I was still a little bit inexperienced. And then did a second trip, came back to the restaurants. They still had their mushrooms. So I called up the farmer's market and it was history. I had a great day that first day and didn't have a very nice table. Just had an umbrella and Ziploc bags. But uh, after, that was 2010. So that was, you know, eight years ago. And been doing it ever since. And I pretty much got it down at this point. My company, if I call it anything, it's Everything Wild. That's what you'll find me under at the uh, Farmer's Market and on Facebook. On Instagram, I'm under Kelowna Forager. Um, but basically, I just take a few hundred pounds of mushrooms every week and try to make sure they all find a home in a kitchen or at the Farmer's Market. And then the rest of the year when there's no mushrooms or it's a tough season, I do a lot with wild herbs. Um, and other than that, the winter's vacation or find a little bit of work. And that's the uh, year-round cycle that I've been doing. So I do dry and preserve a lot of products. So you can always find my dried teas, wild herb blends, um, medicinal mushrooms like reishi and chaga, and then dried culinary mushrooms like morels, lobsters, chanterelles, pines, uh, sometimes a few other odds and ends. So I'll have those for sale year-round. And then we'll see what the future brings. One of the best ways to get into it is just by shopping at your local farmers market and getting to know the mushrooms you know from the vendors if you're in the pacific northwest um any town or city you should be able to find uh at least one person who's selling their wild mushrooms professionally to the public um so that's a great way just to handle each one and then when you're walking going around going on big trips in the mountains eventually you might recognize like a lobster mushroom or a chanterelle or a pine mushroom and then from there, if you want to go into Facebook, there's mushroom pages just dedicated to identification, cooking, hunting, just enjoying and admiring all the different wild mushrooms. And there's ones that are for the whole world. There's ones that are really specific to a region. Um, so the internet and social media has really helped a lot just to collect knowledge and pretty much any mushroom, you know, I can just grab this mushroom here. Just take a little picture of the gills and the cap. You can post that online on Facebook and a whole lot of people will help you identify it. Um, so that's a real game changer where you can just do each mushroom individually because there's one here, there's another species here. I mean, there's got to be at least, you know, a hundred different species of mushrooms just right here. So, yeah, look, here's, let's see. Yeah, there's two more. So, 
yeah, this is a really mushroom heavy area. I'm going to work together with the Start Fresh Kitchen in Kelowna. Um, and I think around Thanksgiving weekend, we're going to be doing several mushroom themed events, including outings to this area where people can come and experience basically just what we did today, picking all these mushrooms. Um, so if you want to look on the website at Start Fresh Kitchen, they will uh, have the information and dates for next year's outings. And then if you want to check out my Facebook page, Everything Wild, I'll be doing uh, foraging outings in the spring and the fall. So especially in the local Okanagan area, if you're there, you can contact me. And on Sundays we go out and just pick, collect, touch, smell, admire all the wild edibles in the area. And then in the fall, we come out here and do it. And then when possible, we'll be uh, taking groups out and doing dinners for morel picking. Um, so that's going out to the bush where there's been forest fires and setting up camp for the night. Everybody gets to pick as many morels as they can and we'll do a big dinner and have the real mushroom camping experience. If I won the lottery or I retired, I would still be coming out to this patch and picking these mushrooms. But I think in the future, people can just expect to see a lot more of me in town, selling my products in grocery stores, um, doing a lot more events, and then eventually, uh, you know, just a variety of products made from dried mushrooms and dried herbs, um, whether it's beverages or medicinal powders and tinctures. Um, just a few more things like that that'll be available to purchase and order online year-round. Um, but for now, I'm pretty much just focused on being a, being a forager, picking mushrooms and herbs and bringing them to the chefs every week and just hustling and making those sales and picking all these awesome mushrooms. So we had a really, really good day today. So if I could just do this every day, I'd be happy with that. But of course, I do have to sell them. You're very lucky to see this place. <laughs> Even today bringing Brian out, I, uh, I almost swore to myself that I would never bring another person here. So I think it's been really nice to share the extreme landscape and picking above the river and the waterfalls and on that steep slope and just for the chance to show people the crazy things that we do out here and picking in a t-shirt even though it's just four degrees in the woods. Um, yeah, it was really fun just to show off the forest and you know, also bring awareness to how much heavily it's being logged here and that no forest is safe and everything I've gotten to know in the past five years, everything gets cut down and I'll have to spend my whole life finding new patches because everyone's get, every one of them is getting cut down by logging companies. But I think the real problem is uh, BC timber sales is just going wild and selling everything. So it's all kind of up for grabs from our government. So. If uh, you live in BC and you vote, maybe consider that next time you're at the election. <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing me to your secret spot. I know that's uh, that's a real hard thing to do for any, it was pretty hard. Any mushroom <laughs> uh, yeah. I promise I won't come back here unless you invite me. Perfect. Uh, I was really surprised to see uh, the devastation on your patch with the logged area and how this patch is very much in jeopardy and, mm -hmm. and it might not be around forever. So. It's a very real threat uh, when you're mushroom foraging and you find something good. And uh, I hope maybe uh, at least along the river, this patch will be protected. And yeah, I mean, I'm glad we were able to get it on film and, you know, I could at least share what's mm -hmm. going on here because it's really nice. And, you know, maybe they'll leave it since it's surrounded by clear cut. But, uh, yeah, everywhere I go, you know, I can show up for the next year and it's it's gone. But fortunately, half of it's still there and we got about... I don't know, 55, 60 pounds of mushrooms. Yeah, and maybe so, uh, just talk about what, what species we found today. Uh, mostly just the pine mushrooms, the uh, matsutake. Uh, might as well get these giants in the shot. Here were two of the big ones that were growing right together as one. Um, <laughs> you can see it's covered in the needles and dirt, so we had to dig that right out of the moss. and. Uh, Man, they smell so good. What does that smell like? Like candy and cinnamon. So it's and like a like a sweet, yeah, sweet Christmas smell almost. <laughs> weird herbs and potpourri and, and yeah. And uh, we also found some gypsy mushrooms and uh, what's that other one called? The horseback. Man on horseback Man mushrooms. On horseback. I've never yeah. eaten those. Um, yeah, those are crazy. They're all trichomas actually, so they're on the same family as the pine mushrooms. Um, other than that, hopefully we'll find a few bullets today. We got a few of the last white chanterelles to 
came here a month ago, you could have probably got a few baskets of the white chanterelles. And a couple weeks before that, you could have gone all through the woods here and found tons of lobster mushrooms. But now this time of year, it's mostly pines and then those few other varieties that we find along the way. But you can pick out here since uh, the end of August, and now we're almost at the end of October, so pretty long season. Well, well thanks again. Uh, I hope uh, all of you learned something today. Scott really knows what he's talking about. Again, you can reach Scott at uh, on, on his Facebook page. at uh, the yeah, company Everything is, Wild. Everything Wild. I'll and leave a link below, and you guys can check him out. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott's based in Kelowna, and this guy really knows his stuff. And <laughs> He's probably going to be doing some workshops in the near future, so don't hesitate to contact him. There, thanks, yeah, thanks again, and uh, maybe we'll do uh, morels next time. Yeah, maybe uh, we got year, a morel and maybe a porcini video coming oh, soon. Oh, porcini! Okay, <laughs> we'll see about that one. All right, see you guys. <laughs>